Hello, I'm Bood and welcome to episode 3 of Rebuilding Boa Vista. Part of my rebuilding series which I'm loving making and playing and you guys seem to enjoy it too. Um, and yeah, this is the final part of the Boa Vista journey. Um, as you know, I'm only going to be doing a maximum of 3 episodes, 3 seasons per club. But it's been great. Like I said, I've never, I don't think I've ever been to Portugal on Football Manager. If I have, we're talking back in the Champ Manager days. That's how long ago it would have been. Um, I didn't even go to Portugal on the journey, man. I don't know how we missed it somehow, but um, it's been it's been good. And it's been good to do with a team like this. It's not, you know, a so-called bigger team. Um, last season, you might know this. We had a we got a new board, got a bit of money, ish, bit of money. Spent a bit of money, got a good team, and we had a good season. Fourth again in the league, um, runners up in the cup final, and we got to the semi-final. I can't believe we beat on our way. And when I got mains in the semis, I was thinking, come on, finally, again. No, we uh, blew that out the window. But we're going to have a bit more investment this year. The club's going to grow a little bit more. Could I take him that one step further? We'll find out today, won't we? If you enjoy it, smash the like button. If you're new, feel free to subscribe. Come and join the family. Go and check out all my other videos. And yeah, let's get into it. I was really looking forward to this third season. Now, um, I'm going to show you the transfers in a minute, sort of. I don't... Quite a few again, I don't want to go through them all because a lot of them, I don't know them, you don't know them. It takes forever, so I think we'll have a quick overview and then jump onto the team report. But I mean, this is a club on the up anyway. I mean, I've got fourth position with the original squad and the squad I've started to put together. Well, they're on the up, aren't they? They've got an eighth, a ninth. I mean, these dark days are behind them. I mean, I, I, honestly, they're a club, I think, itching to be great. And they've got a, they don't have a lot of fans, but I think if you played it long... You start filling that stadium, which, if you've seen episode one, you know it's a, a lovely, lovely looking stadium. I also love it when I get both my financial affiliates. You'll know, in the previous episode, we got one in Tokyo with FC Tokyo, and now we've got one with a pretty cool club in China. So we are in the Far East, loving it, selling loads of Boa Vista shirts. Money, money, money in my pocket. Well then, I've spent quite a bit. I've pushed it out to about 20 million, uh, a lot of add-ons and so on. One player's left. For profit, because I signed him on a free. I talked about him. Me, I think I talked about him in the last episode. He looked really good. He got released. Didn't really work out for him. We signed him on a free. I've made a little bit of money from him, even though his value's doubled. Brilliant. Um, but I brought in quite a lot of players. A lot of players I'm really happy with. We might miss a few of the new guys, but sometimes you know I sign players. You sign players to squad fillers. Let's just look at the main players that I was going to be using this season. Um, of course, we've got Ivan now in his second year. I think he's got a bit better. Good young goalkeeper on the game, Brazilian. At centre halves, we've got Mayras again in his second year. What a good young player this guy. You can get hold of him. Go for him. We've got this geezer, who I like a lot, Cardona. Hey, eh? No nonsense, Argentinian, brilliant. So there are my two main centre halves. Uh, at left back, Pele is going to get pushed back because I managed to get this guy in on loan. And I think he's a, a bit better. We, of course, have this geezer, Rocker. Who's okay. I've signed him this year. But I've got a boy from one of my older rebuilds. Reese James. Is it, is it Chelsea? He came up for loan. He's brilliant. I know he's good because he's played for me before. In the middle, we've got a guy on loan called Skip um, from Spurs. Who I think is good, good young player. Um, we've still got <laughs> my psychopath, Compagnucci, the Argentinian. We've still got Ronaldo. Um, Garrito. I think he's a new geezer. He was pretty decent. I mean, midfield, the central midfielders are pretty solid. Obviously, we've got Georgie Kinkladze from last year. We've got Jekka still into his second season. Why was he out on loan? I still don't understand that. Good player. We've still got this guy floating about who just doesn't look amazing. Puts, puts in a shift for me. And I brought in Odegaard on loan from Real Madrid. Now, last year, my main striker was obviously Pedro. Brilliant. Got him for a few mil. From Benfica. But I did mention it. I think I kept it in. Sometimes they edit stuff out and I can't remember what I've edited out of previous episodes. But I talked about a striker I nearly got. Couldn't, I could agree a fee, I couldn't agree personal terms. But it was this guy, he was still there. We brought him in this year, 19 years now. Vin Vinicius Popo. Or we like to call him the Pope. We've lost someone to Sporting Lisbon. Um, and I brought two guys in. Um, I had to bring in a new head of youth. I think mine retired and uh, I've brought in a new head physio because he retired and um, I've not brought in a new scout to replace him just yet. I'm not that bothered about this last third season. 
but my stats looking pretty good. As you can see, we've got the best medical team and the best coaching team in all of Portugal. Hey, you're not touching us. We're awesome. Hopefully, this gives us that advantage. I'm a big believer, and I think I've proven that in the video, sort of, the great staff is the way to go. Well, and here's the odds for the season, and we're fifth now. Don't matter how well we do, I just, they just don't fancy us, do they, for ever putting in a half-decent um, title challenge. But um, Porto have spent some money. Now, of course, I use a volcano. I've used it through the entire um, rebuild series, and I wanted to use it because I love it. And uh, I just wanted to see, you know, how it can help clubs rebuild, basically. But um, you might have seen an advert, put my advert out earlier this week about the team I'm doing next. And I looked at their squad and it really didn't suit it and I really don't have any finances and I really couldn't even bring many people in on loan. So I've, I've been forced, I've been forced to use a new tactic in the uh, next rebuild. I don't know if I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to see how it goes. So with all that Oriental connections in um, Japan and China, I wanted to go out there. I can't. I can't go to America yet and that always annoys me. Um, I had to go to Scotland. So we've been to Wales, now we've been to Scotland on tour. I take them to the best places. Scotland is beautiful. Uh, and we started off with a game against Air United. If you know me, you'll know I did a, a rebuild last year on FM18 with Air United. Similar to this, exactly the same. Each episode was a season, um, but it took me about 12 years. <laughs> 12 years to win the uh, SPL. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with my next team, because my next team is in Scotland, isn't it, on the rebuild. Uh, but yeah, we went there, we didn't lose. Which is always a good thing. We drew both our games in the capital. And then beat Rangers. The mighty Gers. Now this year is going to be pretty awesome. Because I don't think we're going to have to qualify as much. For the Europa League. Although I was just guessing at this point. And we're in the Super Taka. Which is like the Community Shield. Um, because obviously Porto did the double last year. They beat us in the cup final. And they won the league. And now they've spent uh, 70 million quid. And we've got to play him in a cup. But you never know what's going to happen, do you? You never know. Well, this is the squad before we start the season. Arranged by ability. And we've got some really good players here. I mean, a lot of them are alone. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I didn't show you Stefan, did I? Oviedo. He's a region from Sevilla. Uh, he's all right, though. He's all right. This left back's good. I like him. Obviously, we've got the good right back. Um, now, Nick Morass is unhappy. Because someone bigger came in for him. But do you know what? You signed a contract with us. You're not coming for one year and then leaving. That that just gets on my tits. I want good at your age, I want a good two or three years out of you. And you leave when I tell you. I always do that, me. I don't ever cave into demand. If I want that player, I don't care if they're unhappy because they will always get over it eventually. Um, and I make them decisions. We've lost a couple of the old guys, but there's the squad, if you look at the ages there, got a couple of guys in the thirties, but the squad's age is coming down as well. It's Get into a good place. And with this new squad, what do the board wants to achieve this year? Well, they just want, again, Europa League in the league. So that's top five. No pressure, really. Um, they'd like us to get to the group stage of the Europa League. I want to get to the bloody semis again, but we'll see. Uh, Taka de Portugal, sixth round. That's what we lost last year. They've got the Taka de Liga, which I don't think anyone's that bothered about. Uh, and they're not bothered about the Super Taka, but it's Porto, isn't it? I've got a new team, they've got new players. I wanted to I wanted to put up a fight anyway. We did put up a fight. They didn't technically beat us on the pitch. They had to go down to um, penalties. But I felt good about that. And when you think of the squad they had and what they've added to it financially and some of them, I mean, they signed Ander Herrera as well on a free, who is probably getting on a bit. But in this league, I bet he's still some player. I mean, I'd like him in my team, please. Let's check in on those European qualifiers. And we, of course, played. <laughs> what? Q Kariki. Q Kariki. Q Kariki. Who? They're, of course, from Serbia. I knew that, and I'm, I know you knew that. Um, if you shut your eyes like this, they look like Real Madrid, don't they? Shut your eyes and look at them kits. Look like Real Madrid. So, of course, we beat them 3 0. What did we do at home? 1 0. Jacket got us the goal in the second half. Should have scored more. We dominated it, really. So, yeah. Happy days. Foolishly. I didn't look at the small print. We had more qualifiers this time. And I thought what the computer thought to itself is, Bood can't say or pronounce anything. He can hardly even speak English. So let's make sure the teams we're putting up against have got the stupidest, weirdest names you've ever seen. Ural Yekak Terenberg. 
Ural Yeka Terenberg. Ural Yeka, fuck me, that is stupid. Russian, we all knew that, I knew that. Russian. Sounds totally Russian. And of course we beat him 2-0. With goals from my wingers. Them two little wingers becoming my favourite wingers of all time ever. In the history of ever. But then it was off to Russia to play. Ural Yeka Terenberg. And we beat them 2-1, 4-1 on aggregate. Uh, King Kladze got us our first goal and Skip got us another one, young Skipper. Hey, the Spurs are loving this. Good, good team we are. He's getting a suntan, he's playing in Europe. And now, now we're in the group stage. And we ended up in Group L. And it wasn't for losers, it was for legends. And that's what we are. We topped that group and it's got Napoli in it, Trasbanspor, and Legia Warsaw, Legia Warsaw from Poland. Hey? I loved it. I didn't expect to be this good in the group. I know we got to the semis last year, but really happy with this. Uh, the game we lost was against Trasbanspor. Uh, we got beat 2 1. We drew in now playing, and of course, we won all the others. Eh? Happy days, happiness all around. And we've drawn Athletic Old Club Bilbao. Or Athletic Club, or whatever you want to call them. You call them whatever you want to call them. Um, the team that can only buy. Spanish Basque players. I did a save of these ones just for the challenge of it. It is quite interesting. It's tough, but just pump all your money in the facilities and hopefully over the years, if you can keep your job, you um, get some good regions. On to the Taka de Liga for the first time in three years. We won the group by a point. We only won one game. We drew two, but we didn't get beat. Who cares? I've actually got through it. I keep saying I don't care about this, but now I'm out of the group. Let's see what we can do. It's a semi, so I'm guessing it's all the, the big boys. And we've drawn Benfica. So, I mean, we've beaten these in the past. We could we could do it on our day. It's in a neutral stadium. The Estadio de la Draghia, or Draghia, or whatever that is. I don't even know where that is. But I bet you it's bloody lovely weather. And the challenges just keep on coming. Um, obviously, we've got to the final of this. This is the Taca de Portugal at the FA Cup. Um, we got to the final last year, obviously. Got beat by Porto. Um, we've ploughed through three teams, not really dominating them, but we should have. Um, and got ourselves into the sixth round where we're going to be playing Sporting, Lisbon. So, honestly, if I said to my mate, have you ever heard of Sporting? He'd be like, Sporting who? Sporting Lisbon. He'd go, oh yeah, that team we signed uh, Cristiano Ronaldo from. Yeah, that one. Honestly, honestly, no offence, but it is Sporting Lisbon. Um, we've got them. Now, they, have, they had a bad year the first year, last year. They had a bit of a comeback, so... I mean, never know what we're going to get with them. But if you look at the league, you'll see we're fifth. So we'll have to wait to see. Are they above us or below us? They are below us, just uh, by a spot. So we are in fifth. We've got 24 points. Benfica. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think I'm winning the league in these three years. I reckon if I played it and played it and played it, I'd get there eventually. Um, but it's, we need, they need more. We need more infrastructure, more sponsorship. Better players, really. Just a bit more quality. Um, I mean, there's, there's other teams around us, like Nacional de Madeira. Madeira Cake. Have you ever had Madeira Cake? I love that cake. Um, and then the other team in third. Sporting are just behind us. Braga, who have been very good. They're in eighth. T Tondela. That team everyone knows about. Tondela. It's a tough league, but it's fun. Um, so, yeah, we've lost five against Tondela. Um, but you might not see, you might notice there. It's not big teams, is it? No. We've drawn. We drew with Benfica three three, and we've won seven. Did you see we beat? We beat Porto two nil, and I beat Sporting Lisbon four one in their own stadium. Oh, Porto was in their own stadium as well, by the way. Okay. I'm gonna clap this. I'm gonna tap myself on the back. So who's doing the business for me? I might not have got some player. I watched a clip on him this morning on Twitter doing some move. Wherever he is on loan. Bloody hell, it was amazing. This threaded ball pass thing was brilliant. Um, but he's a good player, isn't he? I think he, he made a mistake going to Real Madrid. Too early. He should have gone somewhere where he's going to be playing all the time. But he's good in this game. I've had him on other saves. We've got Pele at left back. He's really battled it out and probably won that job. I didn't think he was going to, but he has. So fair play to Pele. Uh, Campagnucci, I love him. He's a beast. He's been injured though, so he hasn't played too much. Jekyll, though, great player. Maras, great player. I've got some really, 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 really good players. It's my strikers. I think last year, 
Enrique was the main man. Now he's only played four and scored four. He was the only main man, so he just bossed it, didn't it? Whereas I think Popo or the Pope, he's been playing more of the games. Twenty six starts, he scored ten. I might have made a mistake there. Maybe I should have just kept on playing Enrique because I know he can score. Now he's pissed off, in it. Quick checking in the cash. There's nothing major to talk about. We're doing all right. We we steadily keep about 10, 13. We've got in a minute in the bank. I've got a little bit to spend. I've probably got a little bit of wiggle room as well. But like I always say, I don't really tend to buy in January. I think you, you end up buying below par players unless you, every now and again you might find a gem. It's it's never usually the case. So. The club's on a financial, it's on a good footing. We, we're, we're doing all the training facilities and all that, it's great. Um, so yeah, I have no issues. Let's have a look at some of my players. And obviously, it might not have got now, he's 22. So obviously 2021, I know. And he's not, he doesn't scream out. I mean, he's got a load of flair. Yeah, I don't think he's ever going to be on this game, on this version, a top world-class player like some people thought he was going to be. But a team like us, he's perfect. This is Leo Pele, um, the guy I thought was great last year. I thought he was going to get pushed out this year by the guy on loan, but he's just fought for his place and I've not been able to not play him. Again, he's just one of them players you might never have heard of. Um, you know, he's played for Sao Paulo and that's where we got him from. But when you're at a level like this, sometimes he's a, I love finding players like this. I forgot to show you some of the stats. I like these two stats, the attack and the defence stats. This gives you a good idea if you're getting any better. And I think we've got a great defence this year, good goalkeeper. And I think that's showing we're up there with Porto. I mean, and ben, we're up there. You're going to do well. You need to have a good defence. It's this that I think has got us in fifth. It's this striker issue I've got, where I've got Pope, who's a bit better than Enrique, but Enrique scored all them goals last year. I thought Pope was going to come in and do the same, and he's not. Um, so it was just one of them at this point where I didn't really understand. It's hard to not pick the better player, though, isn't it? Even if they're not scoring every game. But if we could just score, we'd be up there challenging. We've got the defence to win a league. I just haven't got the forward goals I ain't got the goals in the team to win a league. But I could still win a cup. I think for the first time ever, we're in everything. Now, obviously, we lost the Super Taka. Forget about that. But I'm still in the Taka de Liga, the Taka de Portugal placard, and the Europa League. Oh, it's going to be exciting. And I want to at least get fourth, because if we go backwards in the league, then that's not very good. So let's start off with what your class is the smallest or the least important of all the cups we're still in. And it is the Taka de Liga semi final. And look at this. Look at it. Take it in. Georgia King Cladze and Popo, or the Pope, scored in the 93rd minute. He even got man of the match. He's a good player. And then we won it. We won the bastard. I said I didn't care about this. Last two years, it's been bad. We won it. I won some it. Buzzing. I played this last week, but I always buzz. It brings a memory back, looking at it with my eyeballs. Penalties, but we deserve to win. Look at, I mean, they had more of the ball, but and we didn't really have any outstanding performances. But we just had loads of opportunity to score. It was quite frustrating. But going to penalties, it's always a lottery. I might shit myself a little bit. Um, we missed a couple, but before we beat Sporting in the cup final, we had to play them in the sixth round of the Taka de Portugal, and this was brilliant. We beat them five one. It was the same kind of performance as we eventually went on to play in the final with, but this time it's when everyone switched on. Goals coming from everywhere. But it wasn't as easy. When you first look at it, you think, wow, well done, mate. But it was an extra time. Now, they were winning 1-0 from an own goal for my centre-half, uh, Cardona. It took Griotto to get one in the 91st minute, <sighs> take it to extra time, where we then scored one, two, three, four goals. In 11 minutes, 20 minutes ish. They just like collapsed. Then it's on to the semi final, which is two legs to play. Those guys can't pronounce that. If you're Portuguese, please uh, help us out in the comments. Um, we should have beaten by more. We've scored one goal, early doors penalty. George King Cladze, you're my hero. And then we went to their place, and the Pope got both our goals. Really turn it on at the end of the season. Another man of the match performance, and a return. To the Taka de Portugal final, where we would have to face the team that beat us last year, Porto, the best team in all the land. But they didn't beat us this time. We've done it. No, they didn't do it. That's two cups. Both the Takas. What does Taka mean? Whatever it means, does it mean cup? Who cares? Both Takas are mine. 2 1. Cardona, he scored, made up for it. Um, pretty even game. 
to be fair. We've beaten Porto anyway. On our day, we could beat anyone. Even as good as they are, they couldn't do it. We did it. Revenge for last year and two trophies in the last season. But is that all? Did I come back in the league? And what about Europe? Well, of course, we got to the semi-final last year. Could we repeat that? Could we go one step further? First, though, we had to beat Atletico Club Bilbao. Uh, and we drew 0-0 in Bilbao. But then we brought him back to Portugal. And we did a job 2-1. Popo really turned it on the second half of the season, that kid. I'm glad I didn't give up on him. He just needed to, to settle into life here in Portugal. But next up, it was another Spanish team and one of the big boys. It was Atletico Madrid. Um, always a tough team to come up against. Good team, good manager, good everything. And then our hopes of getting to a semi again, or even getting a semi, all died out. Um, we got battered 3 0 at home, 4 0 in aggregate. <sighs> but there was a little bit of a silver lining on top of the two cups. Forget about Europe. I finally got in the top three, which is really good. So, 4 4 3. I'm happy with that. Um, like I said, that's good. Only two points behind Porto. Ain't bad, that, is it? Um, Benfica only nine points away. That's a gap you could realistically close with a couple more seasons. Um, it has just been, what is it, Porto, Benfica, Porto, Benfica winning this last few years. So I honestly challenge you to go out there, load it up, and get the new database. Don't use this one. Which, by the way, I'm going to be using, I'm not using this database anymore. Uh, I've got a new one. It's the full updated database. That's what I'm going to be using on for Aberdeen. All the transfers, if you're correct. Um, and just have a go. Here's my final squad, um, and it's a good little squad. I'm happy with it. Uh, Campagnucci ended up my best player. When I signed him, I was worried about his aggression, but it suited him down to the ground. He's been he's been brilliant for me. Like really good. He's a defensive midfielder in this tactic, and that's what I'm going to miss not using this tactic. You know, them kind of goals and assists from midfield, um, from the centre of midfield, from a defensive midfielder. Um, Kinky, great player. Popo, the Pope, ended up. Climbing up the ranks, scored some some goals towards the end of the season. Finished with 28, so I was, I was happy, really. So I didn't manage to win him a league over three seasons. There's a bit more work to do, but it's possible, I reckon. But, you know, we picked up some cups. We picked up some silverware. I think I've left the club in a better place. They've got new owners anyway, so it's all good. I'm um, I'm really happy with this. I've, I've had a lot of fun. So there we have it. That is the end of Rebuilding Bo Vista. Hopefully you enjoyed all three episodes. I really do appreciate you taking the time to... Uh, sit here and watch him and hopefully smash the like button um really do appreciate it now obviously some of you might have seen my advert have hinted to where i'm going which is scotland and um, but i did put the advert out on youtube but not everyone sees them adverts the next team i'm going to is going to be aberdeen and um, my granddad was scottish i've got connections with air united but aberdeen is a team that i like because i'm a manchester united fan it's where fergie came from he left them in a good place. I mean, they're the last team to win the Scottish League other than Glasgow Rangers or Glasgow Celtic. Which, you know, and it's hard toppling them too. Rangers are back up there now, so. Yeah, I mean, in three years as well. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I've, not, I've, I've only played... I need to get playing this, really. I've only played half the first season. I thought this was hard. This is going to be hard, because if I don't get a takeover, I don't know where... I don't know where any money's going to come from. It's going to be all about loans and freeze. But I've done this before with Air United. So, yeah, hopefully you're going to look forward to that. It should be out on Tuesday, hopefully. Also, I've got a video coming out called The Shelby Brothers. It's going to be about three lads from Birmingham. We go on different journeys with different teams. And we're going to follow their careers. Uh, hopefully you're going to look out and enjoy that. Tell your friends, share this on social media. If you want to help the channel out a little bit more, you can post to my Patreon. You'll have a very good chance of winning a copy of FM20 if you do become a patron and you'll be part of my FM20 series, which oh should be awesome. Anyway, thank you. You've been amazing. I've been booed. I'll see you next time.